Gordon Moore and John Jackson. Hello and welcome to Trojans Live, presented by your Southern California BMW Centers on the home for all things USC football, ESPN LA 710. We have some friends from ESPN in the house tonight. Thank you for coming on down, a, a great partner for this show. We are live here at the lab on Figaro with USC head coach Steve Sarkeesian. Later, we're going to be joined by ABC World News Tonight's Person of the Week last week. The guy everyone's talking about, inspirational long snapper Jake Olson. Plus, men's basketball's Jordan McLaughlin and Benny Boatwright will preview their upcoming season. I'm Jordan Moore alongside John Jackson and uh, JJ. It's been a little while since that Stanford game, a couple days. What's, uh, what's still sticking with you from the first loss of the season? Well, it's just really trying to find out where to go from here. I mean, you know, the, the hard thing for us, I mean, the players have a 24-hour rule. You know, fans have like <laughs> <laughs> 24 years. Yeah, yeah, exactly, a whole week rule. Um, I mean, it's just trying to find out where to go from here. I think that, you know, that all the pieces are in place, you know, for this team to be great. Um, the big thing is, is can they put it behind them and how fast can they put it behind them? That's the, from a player standpoint, all these guys are hurting, but they got to get it behind them because the bigger things are in front of us this week. Let's find out from Coach Sark. His segment is brought to you by your Southern California BMW Center's exclusive partner of the SoCal BMW Crosstown Cup. Now during the BMW Mission to Drive, lease a 2015 BMW 320i sedan for as low as $369 a month with zero due at signing. Just sign and drive. Details at SoCalBMW.com. All right, Coach, all eyes are on your defense. Obviously, after that one, you know, put up 31 points but struggled defensively. Where do you need to see the most improvement? As J.J. said, it's all about where, where you go forward. So where do you need to see the most improvement on that side of the ball going forward? Well, I, I think a couple keys that will help us. I, I think, first of all, creating turnovers. You know, we, we haven't created a turnover in eight quarters now uh, on a defense that we really made it a point of emphasis of ours in training camp to, to be an aggressive unit that would get our hands on balls to create turnovers. That's one. Um, two, I think first down wins. We talked about it at length after the game. I felt like the run game was played on our side of the line of scrimmage, and we like to be more attacking. We like to play on the, in the opponent's side of the line of scrimmage to get more knockbacks, to get more wins on first and ten. And then the third piece to it, which is, you know, we've been very good. We were very good last year. We've been very good early in the year as our red zone defense. That didn't occur uh, Saturday night. Stanford, I think, was five for six for yeah. touchdowns in the red zone, where we've been very good uh, for the last year or so. So those are three things that jump out at me of areas where I think we can really make vast improvement in one week. You know, Sark, whenever you lose a game, you obviously don't want to push the panic button, right, and try to change everything. But how right. much can you change uh, maybe fil uh, uh, phil philosophically? Like, do you go to different defensive fronts? Do you become more of a slant team or more of a pressure team? How much do you try to throw in with only seven days to prepare for it? Well, I think the natural thing is to panic. The natural thing is to all of a sudden scrap all the work you've been doing for the last year and a half and go to something new. And that's a dangerous thing to do. Um, I think, one, we have to believe in what we've entrusted in, in, in and the, the work that we've put in to get to this point. Now, that doesn't mean that we're not going to make adjustments. That doesn't mean we're not going to try to play to the strengths of our team. Um, but the reality of it is we put in a lot of time and effort to get to this point. We've got good schemes. Um, we need to prep our players better so that they can go out and perform better. Um, but, you know, I, I think the big thing, J.J., if you walk in the McKay building right now, um, the sky isn't falling inside of there, you know. And, and I made a point to the team today. Um, at th just about this point last year, Ohio State's already lost at home to Virginia Tech, and Arizona's about to lose. Arizona's about to beat Oregon at yeah. home, and those two teams go on and play for a national championship. So um, we can rebound from this, but it, like you said, it's going to take everybody to regroup and to come focused, ready to go at practice tomorrow morning. You know, you sat in this chair last week and, and you nailed it in terms of your points of emphasis. Uh, you know, it would have been, would have been great to, as an analyst. Where does it go? I mean, you said that, you know, two things that come to mind. You said it was all about first and ten, and you said it was all about pushing that pocket up into Kevin Hogan and making him uncomfortable. Where do you, how do you go from, hey, you, you, we, you told him all week the points of emphasis, but then it's got to go to the execution. Well, we need to apply it better. We need to coach it better. Obviously, it's not just me saying it. Um, we need to coach it better, at starting with myself. Uh, we need to correct the mistakes in practice even more so, even better, um, so that we can apply it on Saturday. It, at the most adverse times, when we're fatigued, when we, maybe when we're down by 10, um, that's when our execution has to be at its highest, and it wasn't Saturday night. You know, uh, there, a lot of discussion has been made and talked about at the end of the game. Now, I'm on your side in terms of the, the decision whether to kick the field goal or try to go for the touchdown. 
Arbogast was on it. Was said that you kicked the field goal. Right. I, I just said you drove go for Pete right under that bus. So, hey, hey, <laughs> He's not here to defend himself. Oh yeah, but that's why I tell you. That's why I had to say it. Uh, but with that being said, what you know, give us your thought process right. of what went into the decision that not to kick the field goal. I think. You know, J.J., those things, those are the classic Monday morning quarterback yeah. discussions. You know, I mean, uh, there's a lot of ways to skin a cat when you get into those scenarios, especially when you're kind of in desperation mode. We felt like with the amount of time on the clock, when we went, we got to fourth down, there was 14 seconds up. We gave our guys a chance to catch a ball that would give us enough time, maybe 9, 10 seconds, to onside kick, recover it, maybe dink one, get a timeout. We still had a timeout, and then throw one up or get a field goal try. Um you can go back and forth on it. You kick the field goal. If you make it, then you hit that now you have to launch one from beyond 50 yards. Um, we gave ourselves a chance. We threw one up. It was a bang-bang play. We almost caught it in the end zone. I believe it was Darius Rogers. Right. So, you know, I don't know if there's a perfect way to do all those scenarios. You, you go with your gut. You can make sure as a staff everybody's on the same page, which we were, and, and we went for it. What are your thoughts philosophically? I'm going to be an up-tempo team that you have to concede to a team like Stanford. Hey, they're going to they're have it. And is it more on your offense, or is it end up more on your defense in a game like this where, you know, Stanford was able to control the clock? I think you were minus 20 in the game. How much, you know, does that matter to you? Well, it's not one of those stats that are glaring when it comes to wins and losses. When you look at the, the pertinent stats when it comes to winning and losing games, you talk about turnover margin. Uh, you talk about average yards per play, explosive plays, red zone efficiency, third down efficiency. All those things really, really are the ones that matter. At the end of the day – regardless of how long Stanford had the ball, they ran 74 plays, we ran 60. So you can stand in the huddle all you want, but you're still getting almost the same amount of opportunities in the game that you have. Sure, would we have liked to have had closer to 80 and them in the 60s? Of course, but that falls on everybody. That's us converting more third downs offensively yep. and not settling for punting three times. And that's our defense getting off the field and not only forcing more than one punt. Um, so it goes, everybody has a role in that. Um, but I, to me, it's more about the number of plays than it is how long you have the ball. You know, everybody is sort of pointing to, the, well, and even you've made this point, that you've got to get more pressure on the quarterback some way, somehow. You know, is there anybody that you, know, that you feel on the team is to answer that question? I mean, let's say a Jabari Ruffin. A year ago we were talking about, you know, hey, when he got hurt, man, we have to find some way to get you know, some pressure on the quarterback. It ended up being Tavai, of course, that sort of played that role. Who is, is roughing the guy that's on deck? I mean, or is there anybody you're pointing to now that sort of help you with that? Well, I think I think Jabari can help us there. I think Porter Gustin's only going to get better as he gets more experience doing it. Sue is obviously a very natural yeah. pass rusher. He's got a couple sacks on the year. Um, where our issue really, J.J., is coming, not when we're trying to generate pressure through scheme. It's when we're in our three- or four-man rushes of defeating one-on-one -on -one blocks. That's where we're not winning enough for my liking. And so that will be a point of emphasis of ours because I think a guy like a Greg Townsend has the skill set to, to make that happen. Uh, some of our younger players up front, I think, have the skill set to do that. So we need to continue to emphasize it because we can't just continually keep calling blitzes to try to get home on the quarterback because when you do that, that opens up more passing lanes, right? That's one less defender in pass coverage. Um, and in turn – our containment issues are still there. We, we still have to improve keeping the quarterback in the pocket when we're calling internal pressures. That hurt us the other night. And uh, Kevin, to his credit, Hogan, got out of the pocket, made plays with his legs. When we had free rushers up the middle, he escaped it. We didn't have our edges set to sack him or to force him back to those guys to get the sack. So I think it all has to work together. Um, but the reality of it is we still end up with three sacks the other night, pressured him some. I would have liked to have had about six sacks. Maybe been a different outcome in the ball game. What do you think about your rotation policy? I mean, obviously you got to play with it a little bit in the first two games. You got to see it over four quarters, and you really stuck with it. You know, we we talked about it on air right right to the last drive. You, I think you swapped defensive linemen. You know, after the first three plays in the, in, in the last drive for Stanford. You know, how do you think it played out? You know, tweaks that, that need, needs going forward. Well, I, I thought Stanford did credit them. I thought they did a good job. They they made us really think defensively. They gave us a myriad of personnel groupings, formations, shifts, um, and, and that put a lot of pressure on a younger player to get lined up to make those proper adjustments. And so we probably didn't platoon as much as maybe we will moving forward or we have previously just because we felt like there was a lot of stress on those guys to get lined up properly, and that's what Stanford does. They put pressure on you that way as opposed to maybe a team that just goes up-tempo and no huddle. So um, we'll continue to do it. Um, 
we really believe our, our depth is our strength, and it will be as we move into October and into November and ultimately into December. All right, that's Coach Sark, and we've got a lot more to come here with the head coach. The Trojans head on the road for the first time this season, going to the Tempe, Arizona State, tough matchup, prime time, 7.30 on ESPN Television, of course, right here on ESPN Radio on Saturday night. We'll get Sark talking about that game. You are listening to Trojans Live on ESPN LA 710. And it was a touchdown for USC. Juju Smith-Schuster had a tremendous game. Jordan Moore, John Jackson, and the head coach, Steve Sarkeesian, talking uh, USC football here on Trojans Live at the Lab. Stay with that offense right there. I mean, it, it is hard to imagine, you know, the offense was, was pretty impeccable for most of it. You look at Cody's line now in the season, it's, it's phenomenal. You look at Juju right up there with any receiver in the country. You know, what did, what did you see? What did you like offensively? Well, I thought we were good in the first half. You know, I, I thought 21 points against that defense out of the gates was really good. I, I liked the way we started the second half. But we sputtered a little bit, you know. And, and for us, in a, every game's going to be different. We beat Stanford a year ago 13-10. to 10. Yeah. Saturday night, we needed to <laughs> score 42. And right. we didn't get it done. And so it's a team game. It's the ultimate team game. We had some penalties that were uncharacteristic of us, a Max Turek penalty, a, a Zach Banner penalty, a couple formation penalties that we hadn't had the first two games that kind of – we shot ourselves in the foot to some degree. So as, as good as some of the numbers look, at the end of the day, our execution wasn't up to standard of what it needed to be in that type of game that we were in Saturday night. I tell you, for me, the biggest bright spot was the receivers blocking down the field once again. You know, talk about the effort that they're putting in because, I mean, everybody wants the ball, but they are making or um, allowing you to make big plays because of their effort. Without a doubt. Their effort is phenomenal right now. And uh, it starts with Juju. I mean, what he's doing, everybody, it's easy to look at his catches, but what he's doing, the run Cody has, the block he puts on the safety, uh, Darius blocking for Juju down the field, Stephen Mitchell with a huge block. I just think their effort is is unbelievable right now i think it's contagious i think as a staff we continue to show it to the team and it's starting to spread it showed up on special teams i thought our effort on kickoff coverage was was phenomenal the other night as well coach there was a media report that came out today i'm going to put i'm going to put media in air quotes but that, <laughs> that there was an altercation post game between teammates either in the tunnel or the locker room you have a reaction to that story yeah i'm disappointed that that's how the story came out because in my opinion that's poor reporting and that's poor uh, journalism, uh, if that's what you want to call it. Uh, first of all, to quote me for something that I did not say. Second of all, to, to mention an incident that never occurred and you weren't there and you're, and you're talking about you got it from multiple sources but you won't name the sources, in my opinion, that's poor reporting. And I, and I feel bad for the guys that cover us on a daily basis uh, from all of the news outlets that are here that I see every day and the job that they do because it puts them in a really difficult situation because th those men and women do a great job covering USC football, and they're with us every day. They were in the tunnel. They were in, in our locker room for our press conference. Not, not one of them reported that. And I, and I feel bad for those guys because now they have to answer to, well, why didn't you know, and how did you not know? Well, it wasn't true. And I, I wish those outlets that would want to write that story come to practice every day, talk to me every day, and develop some trust, and I'll let them know anything they need to know about our program. You know, and to go along with that, talk about the, the approach you took with the team. I mean, after our, a tough loss like that, um, obviously everybody is, you know, is, is upset. But from a head coaching perspective, what approach did you take with your team and why? Well, first of all, I'm, I'm honest with our guys. I, mean, I, I tell them the truth of exactly what occurred, why it occurred, what I think needs to be fixed. Two, I try to paint a picture of what, how we're going to resolve it, how we're going to deal with it. And then three, build them back up. At the end of the day, uh, you know, we can browbeat guys all we want. We, you know, we can make them feel bad. I mean, we all feel bad. And right. believe me, every one of those guys, they wanted to win that game as bad as anything. We didn't get it done. Well, let's, let's find out what the issues were. Let's get them fixed, and let's get ready to play Saturday night. And as I said earlier, a lot of really good football teams have lost football games before. And they've gone on to have tremendous seasons. And it's easy to point out Ohio State from a year ago. It's easy to point out Oregon from a year ago. Um, so our, we still can control everything we want to get done this season. But we need to come ready to go and practice tomorrow. We need to get back on the horse. Uh, we need to start riding again. And, and we will. We're a good football team. I have no doubt. We've got great leadership. We've got good coaches. Um, we need to come out focused, and we're, we're going to need it. We're playing a really good opponent on the road Saturday night in a hostile environment. That was where I was going with my next question, too. You're going to have to get it back up on the horse real quick. This is a team that's given you, you know, problems 
uh, you know, recently. You, you know, played them last year in that dramatic game. You know, what, what's the test at hand as you look at Arizona State and the first road game for this team? Well, I think one, crowd noise will be different for us offensively, so cadence, things of that nature. Two, they've got a quarterback who's got a gunslinger mentality. He's going to stand back there and let it rip and Mike Berkoviki. So we're, we're going to have to, again, find ways to pressure the quarterback, which we touched on. And three, it's a hungry football team, right? I mean, they're, they're playing their Pac-12 opener. It's at home. They want to jump out and get the lead in, in the South Division. And so this is a really critical game very early in the season for us that, we, we, you know, we need to put our best foot forward to try to get a W. You know, how, how much similarity are you going to see with this Arizona State? I mean, the same coach, but, I mean, from a personnel standpoint, with this Arizona State team versus a year ago, what do they do better or what do they? Well, I think it's going to be very similar, J.J. Obviously, we faced Mike last year as the quarterback with Taylor being out. Uh, D.J. Foster is a really uh, – versatile guy they use on offense in the slot in the backfield demario richard really good runner pass receiver they've got big wide receivers they throw the ball to defensively coach graham great defensive coach very aggressive blitzing style a lot of man coverage so we've got to try to create some big plays there but um they're going to be similar you know they, they didn't change dramatically everybody added some new wrinkles just like we did in the off season but for the most part very similar you know the truth is offensively stanford is the outlier in this conference they're, they're different than, than most of the pac-12 and so i wonder do the problems that were presented in that stanford game do they even necessarily relate to this arizona state game or, or is the challenge just you know completely different as they start spreading you out and you deal with these you know di different kind of offenses well there's some there's some natural fundamental aspects of the game of football that carry over you got to be physical at the point of attack whether it's on offense or defense and you got to try to defeat your man Th those those override i don't care if you run the wishbone or a no huddle spread offense those things remain true week in and week out so that that is going to carry over the style the tempo things of that nature sure every week is different and you have to prepare for your opponent and everybody's going to lean on what they deem as their own strengths and arizona state is an up-tempo team they will run the ball. Don't, you know, they're going to run the football at us. They're going to test us that way. They're going to drop back. They're going to throw the ball down the field. They're going to test us that way as well. Uh, they're going to blitz us. They're going to give us a bunch of twists and stunts up front. They're going to test our offensive line that way. So we have to be prepared for the things that they're good at. You know, and with that, with both teams being sort of in that up-tempo mode, um, does it change decisions, coaching decisions? You've you got to assume you're going to get the ball more, get more possessions in this game. In terms of managing the game, does it change? Sure. Well, of course. You know, every game's different. Every game takes on its own personality based on the score, uh, how much time's left in the game, you know, what's, you know, all the things that, that play into it. Uh, I think the biggest thing for us is continue to lean on our depth. It's going to be warm Saturday in Tempe. We're going to have to play a lot of people. We only get to travel 70. Uh, it's a conference game going on the road. So we need to play to our strengths, and I think if we do that and we play our, our style and our brand of football and put our best foot forward, we're going to be fine. You know, you want to make plays on defense. We were talking about this earlier today. And a Dory Jackson, it seems like such a defensive playmaker, but the problem is they just don't throw it at him. H how do you get him to use him so he can make more of an impact on the game? I mean, obviously I know there's offensive opportunities, special teams, that's why you try to get the right. ball in his hands. But, you know, even defensively, are there ways to, to, to just get him in the way more because they just seem to be bypassing him? Well, uh, man, that's a great sign of respect that he has from, from our conference right now. Uh, what's going to help him is as – Iman and Kevon play even better. Now you're forcing them. You're forcing an offense's hand. Are you going to throw it to the right? You're going to throw it to the left? Maybe we cheat the safety a little bit more to help the other guy to force that ball go his way. Um, but the reality is, that Dory's playing good football. Um, you know, it, it was a heck of a kickoff return for a touchdown. Yeah. You know, I, I think a lot of people would argue was that holding or not on Quentin Powell. Um, but he's going to have plenty of shots, plenty of chances. Probably need to get him a little bit more involved offensively a little sooner in the game. Um, but Adoree's playing good football. And as a corner, if they're not throwing it your way, that, that's a sign of respect. You know, talk about the offensive line a little bit. It seemed like they, especially early in that game, they were starting to really dominate up front. You know, overall evaluation, how did they play throughout the game? I thought they played well, J.J. You know, we made a big deal. We all sat here and Monday morning quarterback after the first week and we gave up five sacks. Yeah. And what's wrong with our offensive line? We've given up one in the last two games against, uh, especially last week, against a, a pretty good defense and notorious for sacking the quarterback in Stanford. So I think they're they're maturing, they're evolving together. Uh, like I said earlier, we took a couple penalties up front that were a little uncharacteristic of us. Max is, you know, he, he pancakes a guy and gives him one more shot after the whistle, gets a 15-yard penalty, and Zach gets a hands-of-the-face penalty there. Uh, and I think Chad Wheeler gets a holding. So... You know, those were a little uncharacteristic. But outside of that, I thought they gave us good running lanes. We ran the ball well. 
Our communication always can be better. They gave Cody ample time to throw the ball down the field, obviously, when you look at his number. So all in all, that group is really moving in the right direction, which hopefully our team can continue in the right direction. Well, Coach referenced it earlier on, but you can come see him, hang out with him at Monday morning quarterback. Uh, it's a lunch in the Galen Center Founders Room. Their next show is Monday, October 12th. JJ's there, too, prior to the Notre Dame games. Uh, sign up online at TrojanAthleticFund.com or call 213-740-4167. Thank you so much to the coach, as always, for joining us and a guy that I know you are inspired by and you are thrilled to have on your team. Jake Olson will join us next. A special guest here. You're listening to Trojans Live on ESPN Los Angeles 710.